So first, I think we should thank uh, Rolling Stones for bringing Ayn Rand up and asking Obama about Ayn Rand. It just shows the influence Ayn Rand now has in our culture that both political parties have to have a stand on Rand. Uh, we see Paul Ryan running away from comments he made earlier about the great influence he had on his life. And now we see Obama criticizing her, uh, you know, on the necessity, the feeling, the necessity that he has to say something about Ayn Rand. So the first thing to say is, wow, this is an indication of the influence she has on, on how prevalent she is out there and uh, the fact that in politics today, in our culture today, you need to have read Ayn Rand and you need to be able to comment on Ayn Rand. And, and Obama indeed claims that he read Ayn Rand, whether we believe him or not, I don't know. But at least he says he has, and, and, and a lot of people have. Uh, Hillary Clinton a few years ago said she had gone through an Ayn Rand phase. Uh, obviously, Paul Ryan has read Ayn Rand, and many, many of the politicians uh, in both Republican and Democratic Party, I think, have read her work. Clearly, Obama has no concept of what the work means. And, but more importantly, what, what's clear from his comments is that he disagrees with Ayn Rand. That is, that his view of Ayn Rand, uh, his views, intellectual views, are the opposite of Ayn Rand. He, he is clearly on the side of collectivism, and Ayn Rand is clearly on the side of individualism. And, of course, part of what the collectivists do is they try to explain uh, individualism in, in, uh, in wrong, unappealing terms. So uh, Obama talks about on your own economy as if what we mean by that is some Robinson Crusoe, go find an island, live by yourself. There's no interaction. That's not, of course, what Ayn Rand means at all by her individualism. Uh, society is a good thing. Having other people being productive is a good thing. Being able to trade with other people is a good thing, benefiting from the fact that other people are producing things and then trading with them is a good thing. Individualism is not antisocial, quite the contrary. Society, the interaction among individuals within society, when people are individualistic, when they take care of themselves, when they're productive, when they're rational, when they're honest, when they have integrity, all the virtues Rand talks about when they're independent, independent of mind, independent of thought, think for themselves. When they have pride, that interaction between those kind of people is far superior to an interaction within a society where everybody thinks they owe somebody else something, where everybody, where nobody has self-esteem, where everybody is just a me too kind of person, where nobody's productive, where everybody's trying to squeeze somebody else, other people for, for stuff because of massive redistribution of wealth where government or one group is, is putting pressure in order to get the stuff from another group or to regulate somebody else for their own benefit. That is a horrible world. That is the world we live in today. That is a collectivist world. That is the world Obama is advocating for. The, the world of, of benevolent, individual, rational, independent people, I individuals, that is an economy that's, that booms. That is an economy that creates... Uh, you know, many, many, many more jobs than there are people, rising standard of living, rising wealth, and a benevolence towards other people that people, I think, today can't even imagine. Um, so, of course, he gets that wrong. The other point he makes, uh, you know, kind of to dismiss Ayn Rand is, oh, she's all about, you know, she's for teenagers. You, you know, everybody, everybody reasonable outgrows her. I don't know. I always thought socialism was for teenagers. I always thought that's what you're supposed to outgrow. And that's my experience, and I think the experience of many people is, is it's, the, it's, the, uh, it's a socialist fantasy that people outgrow. But look, what that does is dismiss what it is that appeals to teenagers are about Ayn Rand. What is it that appeals to teenagers? And it's true. Teenagers are the ones that are most that find Ayn Rand most appealing. And what, what she appeals to is their idea of idealism, their search for truth, their search for absolute values, their search for something meaningful in life. And she appeals to that. She appeals to all those virtues. And yes, some teenagers, or when they grow up, they choose to abandon all of that. But that's sad. That's not a good thing. That's really unfortunate. It's unfortunate that so many adults in our world have abandoned idealism, have abandoned a search for a purpose in life, have abandoned self-esteem, and have abandoned, you know, pursuing their own happiness, and have just blended into the conformist masses, right? 
that's a sad testament about the world. So yes, Ayn Rand appeals to teenagers. She appears to their virtue and the better teenagers, the one who stay idealistic, the one who the ones who want to pursue their own happiness and want to figure out what's real out there in the world and and what they how they can make the most out of their own life. They're the ones who stick with Ayn Rand uh, into the future. So obviously Obama gets Ayn Rand completely wrong. It's great that he mentions her, though. It, it sells books. It increased interest. And it, it brings Ayn Rand's ideas to the forefront. And again, it's an indication of a substantial cultural influence that the president of the United States has to even has to address uh, who Ayn Rand, Ayn Rand was and what her influence is.